How's it going everybody? Welcome back into the shot. Now before we get started on this build today, I want to tell you about something new I've been working on. They're downloadable digital plans that I have available on my website. Now this build we're doing today is available uh, right now alongside some of my older projects that I've done that I've just put up there for you guys. And moving forward, I'm going to be adding plans as I, as I build items here um, on the channel. So head over to the website, check that out, uh, get your plans. Uh, let's get started on this build. Now I am beginning this table build with the mortise, uh, cutting the mortises on my mortiser. These are double mortise and tenons and I'm using a half inch hollow chisel bit here uh, to cut these out. Now the part you're looking at right now is the foot of the trestle base. Uh, and this will make more sense as we get into the build. Now once I cut all the mortises, I'm going to move to my bandsaw and start working on the matching tenons. Now cutting double mortise and tenons can be tricky. Uh, bandsaw is a great way to do it. I've got it set up where I can cut uh, one cheek, flip it, cut the other cheek, do that on all the parts, and then I move my fence on the bandsaw and cut the middle cheek. So I go to the table saw, I cut off uh, the bottom section of the part, flip it over to the other side, um, and I've actually flipped the whole side and done the other side of the part. Um, but I'm going to flip this to the other side, uh, take that waste out. And now the only waste I have left is in the middle. So I, I have the two tenons and then that middle waste that we got to take out. Now I can glue up directly off my bandsaw. Uh, I get really good clean cuts and the glue joint will be just fine. I know a lot of people will probably argue against that, uh, but there's not going to be any issues. I can glue directly to the finish of my bandsaw blade uh, without any problems. So I actually will switch over to a 3 8 uh, mortising bit here and remove that center waste with my mortiser. I've never done this before. This is kind of something I just came up with and it worked, it worked really pretty well. Uh, if you don't have this, you can use a table saw or you can do it by hand with a chisel. Uh, using a table saw can be a little dangerous if you don't secure your workpiece properly, so you want to make sure you clamp it down really well. Um, but for me, I have this big floor model uh, mortiser, um, so it did a great job of knocking out that center waste. Okay, so the last step here is there's about a quarter of an inch shoulder on this on the ends there. So I'll set up the bandsaw and just repeat these cuts over and over and then go to the table saw. I don't get a great shot of it here, but then I knock that waste off on the table saw um, and that finishes off the tenons. Trestle tables need to have very strong joinery because uh, there's not a lot of structure to them. It all depends on the joinery. So that's why I use double mortise and tenons and I make them two inches long. There's a lot of glue surface and it's a very, very strong joint. Uh, here you're seeing me just dry fit. I'm not gluing up. Um, I'm dry fitting it together because I'm going to add a trim piece in between these two uprights. And so in order to do that, I want to cut a three eighths, three eighths of an inch deep dado. And I want to, I basically have to dry fit everything so I can take my marking knife and mark exactly where that dado needs to be. Uh, and this this is, might be a little confusing, but it's going to make more sense as we get further along in the build. Now I can transfer over where I made those marks and lay out the dado completely. I want to make sure that it lines up perfectly with those uprights. And I'm going to just cut it on my table saw. Now if you focus here, you see how I slid the workpiece on the blade uh, to my cutting point. I do that a lot when you want to cut right to a line. Uh, don't try to cut right into the blade on that line cut into the waist more and then you can if you just put a little bit of the blade in the wood You can slide it over to your line and get it right where you want it And I'm just gonna hog out the waist uh, using one blade you could set up a dado stack here uh, But for me it made the most sense. It was quickest just to just use a single blade some of the uh, Work pieces were slightly out of square, so I'm using a chisel to kind of dial in the fit exactly like I want it. I've got a one inch bench chisel here that I'm working with, 
and then I'll come back and clean the bottom of the dado out with a quarter inch uh, bench chisel. Okay, so basically the joinery is all cut. I need to start shaping parts. And there's not a lot of shaping in this. It's pretty stri straight lines on this table. I've got a taper on the foot and the support for the tabletop. I cut that taper on my bandsaw. When you cut tapers on a bandsaw, always start going into your cut. Don't go. Uh, don't start on the end of the workpiece and come out of your taper. Uh, it always jumps out. If you start like this, you can get a nice smooth transition into your workpiece. It, it works a lot better. I'll, this is typically how I'll do tapers. I'll just lay them out and then uh, cut them on my bandsaw and then I'll come back with a hand plane and smooth them out, take off the bandsaw marks. I'm using a four and a half smoothing plane, Stanley smoothing plane. If you look here at this shot, you'll notice some pencil marks close to the mortises. I use those to kind of keep track. I want there to be a real great transition from flat to taper, right where that line is. Putting those pencil lines there just kind of helps uh, me follow that transition with the plane and make sure that uh, I'm not cutting too far back. So anywhere you have a table that meets the floor, um, you want to create uh, almost like little foot rest. You don't want this big surface area on the ground because your table won't sit well. So I'm cutting out the middle section of my foot about a 3 16 in. Um, and that, those first cuts I made on the table saw. And then I come here with on my band saw and just cut to those uh, curves I made on the table saw. And so now I have about a 4x4 four four, or 2x4 four footprint on the floor as opposed to the whole width of that, that work piece. I'm putting uh, chamfers on all the edges. I do that with the spoke shave and hand planes. Uh, I, like, I like to kind of stop and, and slow down and use the hand tools here as, as opposed to using a, a router with the chamfer bit. Uh, here I think I have a, a small block plane and I'm just working a slight chamfer on all the pieces. I want to be careful here not to do the inside of the uprights because that's where that trim part's going. Okay, with everything sanded, uh, the chamfer's cut and the taper's cut, I can glue this up. So once I get everything kind of put together, I'll pull it tight with a clamp uh, and shoulder up all the, the, the joints. And once I get them shouldered, I'll take the clamp off and clean the glue off. Now I was taught that uh, if you don't have squeeze out, you don't know you have enough glue. People ask, well, how much glue is enough glue? You want to have some squeeze out so you know you have enough glue in the joint. But obviously any squeeze out is glue you're not using, so it's not necessary. Uh, but you want the squeeze out so you know that you know you've got plenty of glue because a dry joint it can be a, a problem down the road. So I've just cleaned the the squeeze out with some water um, and then sand it down. So I've got the stretchers next to do. I've already cut the tenons and I'm just fitting them now. Uh, you can tell here this is a little tight. You should be able to tap it through. These are through mortise and tenons, so you're going to see the end of the tenon coming through the workpiece. So I want to kind of dial in that fit and make sure it's a nice uh, tight fit. And so I'm using, this is a great tool. It's a, it's a rabbit block plane made by Lee Nielsen and you can trim down tenons really well with it. I use it all the time for trimming tenons. A few passes with that and it really uh, helps. It, you can dial in the fit real nicely with that plane. So I'll take a look, see see how it looks coming through. I left about a quarter of an inch hanging out, and I'll take my pencil and mark um, mark where it hangs out. So I, I, I want to put a little chamfer on the end, and that'll tell me how far I can go. Obviously, if I chamfer too far, that would not look good. So a while back, my dad brought this uh, actually skewed block plane to the shop that he bought. Um, and this is the, actually the first time I ever used it and it works really well it, on ingrain. I mean it cut nicely um, So that's what I'm using for these chamfers I'll do the long edges with that skewed block plane and then come back with a pairing chisel 
and connect those two edges on the short side. The short side's really hard to use uh, a block plane. It's just there's not enough surface area to keep it steady. So I prefer to just grab a chisel and uh, chisel that chamfer on. So here's the trim piece. Uh, I have tinted it almost black on the edges and it slides right in. Um, and I leave it a little bit proud. I like the way that looks and I actually kind of put a little fingernail profile on the end of it. Um, I think it's a cool little look, a little nice little touch. So before I do the full assembly of the table, I like to, to oil uh, as much as I can because it helps, helps for one, to clean the parts when you get squeezed out um, and it just speeds up the process. You know, it takes three or four coats of oil to get a table finished and if I can go ahead and get a couple coats on while I'm while I'm building it, uh, that just helps out. I've oiled the stretchers as well, and so all I've got to do is put glue on the tenons um, and assemble this. You can see the squeeze out I've got there. I can easily clean that off with a rag now. It's not going to stick to the wood. I could even let it dry some and chisel it off real easily. If you don't oil and you have to clean a lot of glue off, it, it adds a ton of time to your work. So getting glue cleaned up um, is it's a big deal. You don't want to have a bunch of dry glue dripped all of your work. You're just going to take a lot of time chiseling that off. Okay, so that wraps it up for part one. Uh, the assembly of the base. We're going to break this into a two-part video because it was so long. Uh, so, I mean, it was like 22 minutes long. So part two, we're going to be doing the drawer. There's a hanging drawer off the bottom of the tabletop. It's really cool. It's on sliding dovetails. Uh, so it'll be super interesting. So you need to stay tuned for that. It'll be coming really soon. Remember, the plans are live. I'm really excited. I've worked really hard on these. Um, so I've gone back and picked out a few, made plans with those, and then this desk is up there. It's a 13-page uh, plans for you guys. Now, if you are not a, if you don't have a lot of experience as a woodworker, you might not want to start with this desk, but if you do, uh, this would be a great, great build for you. I, I think you would enjoy it. Now, the plans and my merchandise are on sale. Uh, that lasts till Monday, so I would highly encourage you uh, to jump on that, the plans are 20% off, and merch is uh, buy one, get 50% off anything else. And that last old Monday, so um, you know, go support the channel. I appreciate you guys. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving, and part two is coming really soon for this video, so stay tuned, and we'll see you next time.